we have seen people behave in various ways during the COVID-19 crisis. One behavior drawing widespread concern is the resistance shown by some people to being quarantined. So if we understand the psychosocial reasons that prompt these behaviors, it may also help us to change them. So why might people try to avoid quarantine? One reason could be our cognitive and emotional responses. We can have distress, fear and concern about the quarantine process and questions like what will happen to me? Will my family be okay? How will society treat me after this? So these distressing thoughts and feelings might make a person not want to alert the health authorities even if they start showing symptoms. Then for some people, they might use psychological defense mechanisms such as denial and minimization, saying things like, I won't get infected. This is just a flu. Only certain types and age categories get infected. These are all attempts to return to a more calm psychological state. So when we ask someone to go into quarantine, we are actually asking them to break down their defenses. So we must provide the necessary support to deal with the distress from making sure their families are looked after to providing them a safe and accepting environment to return to. They mustn't be stigmatized or discriminated because this is only making a bad situation worse. Then another reason for avoiding quarantine could be a resistance to change behavior due to an inability to gauge risk correctly. So for example, those expected to go into quarantine may feel quite healthy and dismiss the risk of getting infected. This risk perception may also be affected by how our brain processes information. So for example, we may get stuck in thinking about the immediate concerns like inconvenience of quarantine then projecting a chain of long-term consequences. There's also a limit to the chunks of information we can process at any time. So we might receive the wrong message when there are many messages. To deal with this, all parties involved need to communicate an accurate and consistent message so people can understand the true nature of the situation and the importance of their actions. An information overload has to be avoided. Research also shows the power of using narratives in addition to facts and figures. So if consent is given, we could sensitively share the lived experiences of those affected so others can personally relate to these stories. Then another reason for people to resist quarantine may be pre-existing problems they fear could get exposed. It could be legal problems or personal issues, such as illnesses they don't want others to know about. So assistance has to be given very sensitively. So for example, someone with a substance use disorder might need to be treated, but this must be done whilst respecting privacy. When you consider the quarantine process itself, Research shows that it can lead to a range of negative psychological effects from a sense of feeling trapped to post-traumatic stress symptoms, depression and anxiety. So we need to help these people to maintain a healthy lifestyle and find ways to maintain their social networks because this can also be a very important coping mechanism. We need to help them to take it one day at a time and remember that this period is not permanent and also increase their sense of purpose and reframe this experience as one in which they are acting to protect our society. We can appeal to individuals to make a moral choice, to go into quarantine to help protect others, but we must also make sure it is possible for them to do so by ensuring that their issues are resolved and that they are empowered to fulfill their duty towards society.